Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Transposones. Now we'll discuss the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease part 2. Now, talking about the pathophysiology, there is decreased forced expiratory volume due to obstruction, residual volume will increase and the ratio of residual volume to the total lung capacity would increase and there will be ventilation perfusion mismatch. Okay, now there will be airflow obstruction and as FEV1 to FVC decreases and it will seldom respond to bronchodilators as occurs in asthma. Now, there is hyperinflation, air trapping. Due to air trapping, we already know the residual volume would increase and hyperinflation will increase the total lung capacity. Now, Hyperinflation basically preserves maximum expiratory airflow. But due to this, it will push and flatten the diaphragm. And three things will happen. There will be decreased zone of apposition between diaphragm and abdominal wall. And positive abdominal pressure during inspiration would not be applied. And the fat, flattened diaphragm will have short muscle fibers which will decrease inspiratory pressure than normal and as we know pressure is 2t by r and as the radius increase of the flattened diaphragm more tension will be required to produce the same pulmonary pressure now talking about the gas exchange uh, pa2 a o2 remains normal until fvv1 decreases to 50 percent and when FEV1 is less than 25% pulmonary hypertension and there is severe cough to cause core pulmonary right ventricular failure. There will be non-uniform ventilation, ventilation perfusion, mismatch. Now, the pathology. In large airways, uh, cigarette smoking will cause mucus gland enlargement and goblet cell hyperplasia which will lead to cuff and sputum production, which is called the chronic bronchitis. Okay. In the bronchi, we'll have the squamous metaplasia, which will pose the risk of carcinogenesis and disrupt the mucociliary clearance. Patient may have smooth muscle hypertrophy and bronchial hyperreactivity. And neutrophil elastase is the most potent secretor gox. Now, talking about the small airways, less than 2 mm in diameter, there is goblet cell metaplasia, mucus secreting cells replacing the clara cells. Clara cells are basically the surfactant. Infiltration of mononuclear infiltrates, smooth muscle hypertrophy. Extracellular metric destruction cause airway distortion and narrowing in COPD. Now, talking about the lung parenchyma. Uh, when we take uh, lavage fluid from a smoker, there is more than 95% of the cells are macrophages. And neutrophils are about 1-2% to 2 and T cells and CD8 cells particularly are increased. Now, emphysema. Emphysema is basically the destruction of gas exchanging spaces, respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts and alveoli. So, centriacinar and it could be panacinar. Centriacinar basically is, occurs in the upper lobes or the superior segments of the lower lobes. And panacinar is in the lower lobes and most commonly due to alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency patients. Now, talking about the pathogenesis, there are four interrelated events in pathogenesis. Chronic smoking would lead to inflammatory cell recruitment and the cells will secrete elastocytic proteinases which will damage the extracellular matrix. Structural cell death due to oxidant stress and loss of matrix cell attachment and ineffective repair will result in air space enlargement. We have the elastase and anti-elastase hypothesis which says that deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin will increase the risk of emphysema because alpha-1 antitrypsin is the inhibitor of serine proteinase neutrophil elastase. Now, inflammation and extracellular matrix proteolysis. We know that during cigarette smoking, oxidants are released, okay, which will activate the macrophages 
and proteinase and chemokines will be released uh release uh, the oxidants will inactivate histone deacetylase 2 and it will increase the loose chromatin which will increase nf kappa b and transcription of ma matrix metalloproteinase interleukin 8 tumor necrosis factor alpha will occur and it will lead to neutrophil recruitment cd8 positive t cells are also recruited now CD8 T cells uh, uh, release IP10 and which will increase the production of MMP12. Autoimmune mechanism is also identified. Antibodies against elastin, IgG, autoantibodies for pulmonary epithel ep pulmonary epithelium. Uh, basically, normally what macrophages do is they uptake the apoptotic cells and they release growth factors which lead to the lung repair. but smoking impairs all this factors okay th uh, that's all for this video N in next video we'll dis discuss the clinical findings lab findings gold criteria and the treatment do like and subscribe my channel and do comment